choir. Our Father, we thank you that you are an excellent God and that you require excellence in your people. So, Lord God, we commit ourselves to excellence. And Father, I pray for everyone here today that they will indeed show the excellency of your goodness. Father, this week we are going to shine. This week we are going to arise. The light of God in us shall come out strongly. The grace of God upon our lives shall be evident to all in the name of Jesus. And your strength shall be the strength which we will show in Jesus' name. I speak a blessing over your people this week. That Lord God, everything within them shall rise up. And the royalty in your children shall come out in mighty ways. Bless them, lift them, and cause them to show their lives worthy of the excellency of your grace. In the name of our God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God bless this morning. Please be seated. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for being in church this morning. We are continuing to live lives worthy of God's excellence in Jesus' name. Thank you, choir, for that this morning. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed the music this morning. Thank you for the songs. Most of the songs we sang this morning during prison and worship were actually our songs, our original songs. So please give a hand to our choir. You know, I've been saying, I've been saying for a long time that we should be singing our songs. So thank you for writing our songs. The song that Rume sang, of an Awipi song as well too, um, that you did in collaboration with somebody in Canada. So well done for that. Congratulations. G give my hand one more time, please. Give my hand one more time. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Welcome to a brand new week. Help me tell someone next to you. Say, welcome to a brand new week. Welcome to a week of excellence. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you this morning. I want to be sharing this morning a few things. Um, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks. And I want to remind us again about our theme that our theme for the year is a focus on Christ for the anointing for increase. And you know, everything we talk about builds upon that increase. We've been talking to us about increase. And then in this month, our theme is a focus on Christ to make Christ known. We must make Christ known everywhere because as we increase, God's word is made known as well in Jesus' name. And so we're talking about that. And so last week I, I shared with us that for the months of March and April, I'm going to be talking along the theme of emerge. Emerge and show the Christ in you. Now I'm talking about this because I want us to begin to get to a point where we show Christ in us. Now it's important to realize this, that if you are going to show Christ and show Christ's goodness inside of you and show God to be the one who is excellent, you must also rise. That's why we began with the scripture in Isaiah chapter 60 saying, arise, shine, for your light has come. And we talked about how there is light inside of you. There is light inside of you. Then the verse continues and says that kings shall come to your rising. People are going to come to see you rise and to see you shine in the name of Jesus. So for you to shine and for you to rise, you must continue to be the kind of person that has that power of God inside of them. So what I'll be talking about today, and we took all those verses and we took them to talk about saying that in order for us to rise and shine, we must emerge. To emerge means to come out of the shadows. To emerge means to come out of behind somebody else. To emerge means you must rise up. To emerge means that you must come and begin to show forth that which is inside you. I believe that there is greatness inside of every one of us in Jesus' name. And as you emerge, Christ will be made known in Jesus' name. So what I've been doing is I've been showing and sharing examples. We are going to be talking about this for about six or seven weeks throughout these two months. And on Wednesdays, I want to invite you on Wednesdays to be part of our Wednesday services. Because Wednesdays we'll be talking and going in depth into this subject as a curriculum. We began by talking about the Christ in you. 
And then last week we talked about pathways to emergence, that sometimes God has you emerge through a valley. Sometimes God has you emerge through opposition. Sometimes God has you emerge through a new assignment. But either way, in all of these three things, God always has you to emerge on a higher level. God never sees you one way and leaves you the same way. He always picks us up so that we emerge on a higher level. So I'm praying for you that you will indeed emerge greater in Jesus' name. What I'll be talking about today is I'll be sharing along the points of emerge. Now, in our curriculum for these couple of weeks, we talk about Christ in you, and that is that hope of glory. We shared about how the Christ in you is excellence. The Christ in you is not a junior holy. The Christ in you has knowledge, and so therefore, you must have knowledge. And then we talked about last week, I said again, the pathways to emergence. So this week, I want to talk about how the Christ in you can emerge in your workplace. And today, I'm going to be doing a teaching, just a simple teaching, based on three points. I will talk to us today about the values that make people most valuable player, or the keys that make people valuable. Because you see, here's the thing about growth. Growth comes when you are ready. And what God does is God promotes us. Now, in the book of Psalms, God tells us, David tells us that promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, and west, but that promotion comes from God. But here's how promotion works. God does not just promote you just because you are a Christian. Now, I know this one is tough. You say, are you sure? I'm a child of God, so God should promote me. Yes, that's true. But the truth is there are many Christians who don't have knowledge. Now, I shared this with you before about saying that you must study to show yourself approved as a workman that does not need to be ashamed. So God doesn't just promote you just because you are there. God promotes you when you are ready. God promotes you because you have put in the time, put in the effort. God promotes you because you have done the work that shows you are ready for the next level. Now, don't get me wrong. God has a time when he just brings you out of the shadows. But here's what God will not do. God will not bring out somebody who is not ready to show his goodness and his excellence. So, the times people just sort of just show up out of nowhere. Yes, it seems as though they came from nowhere. But the truth is, they have been working. They have been studying. They have been putting the time to make sure that what they have on the inside comes out. So, I want to remind you again. Arise and shine, for your light has come, means there's light inside you. Amen? So here's the thing. Nobody can be a prof without having gone through the prerequisites of being a professor. God will not just promote anybody now and say, okay, you just finished school today, first degree holder, tomorrow professor. It doesn't happen. You must put in the time, put in the effort. And so as you are ready, God promotes you. Now, what God will do is, among people who are the same or who are trying to pull you back, God can take you and cause you to stand on top of them. And that's what God will do for you in Jesus' name. But there must be some kind of effort you put in to move to show yourself worthy. So that's what we'll talk about today. I will talk to you about the qualities of valuable players that get them promoted. Now, here's what Isaiah 40 says. Isaiah chapter 40 Go to Isaiah 40, look, look at verses 4 and 5. Help me with the echo. There's too much of an echo on these, on these monitors, please. Isaiah 40, verses 4 and 5. Let's, go, let's put it on the screen if you can, please. It says that every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. Now, this is part of a, a bigger scripture where... The word of God is talking about what God wants to do for his people. But what I want to, to, to take out of this part is, is this. That God put his people out of where the valleys and things that were trying to put them back. God says, look, everything that's an obstacle we brought down. Everything trying to hold you and pull you inside shall be brought back to level. So what God will do then is he'll put everybody at a level playing field and will cause his people to rise above them. That's my prayer for you today. That when God levels the field, he will cause you to rise above it in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. 
Every mountain made low, every valley raised up. When God will level the playing field, you are going to rise out of it in Jesus' name. Okay, I like you guys over here. I'm saying again over here. When God levels the playing field, you'll be the one left standing in Jesus' name. Because what you have put in, in your time, in your efforts, God will cause you to rise in the name of Jesus. Amen? So here's where, where we want to go. I want you to begin to understand this thing, and I'll talk to you about one person in the Bible who rose from out of nowhere, it seemed, to be a valuable asset everywhere he went. This person is a person called Daniel. Now, Daniel is someone in the Old Testament. Um, his life is talked about in the book of Daniel and also in the book of Ezekiel. Daniel was one of the people that was captured from Jerusalem. When he was captured, they took some of the best and brightest minds and brought them to the king's palace to train them. You know the story of Daniel very well. Daniel and his three friends, known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there were four of them. Now, what many people don't remember is, you remember the story of Daniel in the lion's den? Remember the story of Daniel interpreting dreams? But if you look at the first chapter or two, it gives us the foundation upon which Daniel rose. It tells us that Daniel studied. Daniel and his friends, they studied the traditions, they studied the lives, they studied the, the work of the country where they were. So much so that they were more knowledgeable than their partners. So everybody else that was there, including those who were native to the country, Daniel studied and he was above them. It's almost like the way Nigerians are, where Nigerians now are rising anywhere they go. If you go see any, any foreign country, Nigerians are the ones who are at the top. Have you seen that before? That doesn't mean you should run away. Or please don't, don't, don't mean you can run away and go and join them. Or please stay here and help us too. But meanwhile, Nigerians are rising. May you rise in Jesus' name. <laughs> but I want to share three things. I want to share three things about Daniel that helped him to become a valuable player. Now, I'm going to share these things because I want you to follow these principles. And as you follow them, you will rise higher in Jesus' name. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, now, here's the thing about Daniel. Daniel understood. He learned. He studied. And as he studied, he began to grow. Daniel served Nebuchadnezzar. He interpreted dreams of Nebuchadnezzar. Every time everybody else was stumped, Daniel understood the dreams and was able to interpret them. Then Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, also was a king as well too. Daniel was there for him. So he saw that Daniel had done great things for his father, and because he was so valuable, he sought Daniel out and brought him to be his advisor as well. When they had trouble, they called him. Daniel interpreted dreams as well for him, interpreted things along the lines when he saw there was a writing on the wall. Daniel interpreted it for him as well too. Told him that that dream meant that that night he would lose his throne. It happened as Daniel said. The next king came in, King Darius came in. Again, he was looking around saying, wow, who should I call to be my advisor? And he called Daniel as well too. Meaning this, that because Daniel was valuable, everybody that was a king sought him out to be the advisor. My prayer for you is that you'll be so valuable that everybody starts looking for you in Jesus' name. That you'll be so valuable that no matter how much you have left from where you are, maybe you retire, they will look for you in your retirement in Jesus' name. You'll be so valuable that everything you have will be sought after in the name of Jesus. Because your knowledge, I keep saying this again, the Holy Spirit in you is not a junior version of that that was in Roberts or in Benton de Hosa. It's the same Holy Spirit. And the Word of God tells us that He is made wisdom unto us. So that wisdom must come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so what made Daniel so valuable? I'll tell you about this in three, three phrases, okay? There are three things that most valuable players have in common. They call them MVPs. So if you watch football, if you watch basketball, if you watch sports, 
you always hear about what they call an MVP, a most valuable player. Someone who is so valuable. Every time, they always look for this person. So I'll tell you about three keys that valuable players have in common. Okay? Here's a part of it. Like I told you, Daniel interpreted dreams. Daniel was able to solve problems. Daniel was able to answer questions. Okay? So what made him so valuable? Three things. The first one is this. And I'm praying that you also will learn these things. And as you learn them, apply them to your life. So today, I'm not going to shout. I'm not going to, to do much. I want to just teach three principles. I got these principles from Bishop Dale Bronner. He shared about eight of them, which I was able to condense into three. So here's the first one. Three keys of most valuable players that will cause you to be valuable as well in Jesus' name. Amen? Here's the first one. Valuable players are always ready. Okay? The most valuable players, they are ready. So the key from this is that you must be ready. Okay? Anybody who is going to be valuable is ready. Daniel was called upon at night. He was ready. He was called upon in the afternoon. He was ready. He was called upon any time of the day, he was ready. Valuable players are always ready. The most valuable people are the ones that you can call upon any time, and they are ready. Now, let me explain what that means for you. What that means for us is this. I'll start from the spiritual side. Spiritually, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, it says, put on the whole armor of God. In other words, be ready for battle any time. Now, the battle we are fighting as Christians He's not a battle against the devil. We're not here to fight the devil. Why? Because the devil has already been defeated. Am I correct? Yes, he's been defeated on the cross of Calvary. So the fight that we fight is a battle against any tries to raise itself above God's word. So if you understand that you're not fighting the devil, you are fighting things that try to raise themselves up. So you put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You put on these things to show that you are ready. Now, the most valuable armor you can put on is the armor of the righteousness of God. So if you're not a Christian, this is your chance. Know Christ today because the most valuable armor you can have on is the righteousness of God. How do I know this? Because God tells us, he gives us his righteousness. So when you give your life to him, you exchange your life for God's righteousness. Once you put on the righteousness, God gives you a robe of righteousness. He gives you grace that pulls you into his fold. Once you are in the fold, you are righteous. So that's the first most valuable thing. If you are ready, you have the armor of God, you are ready to face anything. So the enemy can come against you in your mind, can come against you at your workplace. You have the armor of God and you are ready. First thing is the armor of righteousness. Next thing you must begin to understand then is this. That for valuable players to be ready, think about it in a sports arena. You cannot enter the field to play unless you have on the right uniform. So if you want to go and play, you must have on the right uniform. Now this means for us that our knowledge must be relevant to where we are. So if you're in education, you must always be learning so that whenever anybody calls you with any question, you are ready. If you're in engineering, you must know the newest information. Whatever field you are in, commit yourself to learning so that you are ready. You see, the people who are ready have on their armor, okay? So get yourself ready. Don't dress for the job you have now. Dress for the job you want to have. Prepare yourself for where you are going. So when I see you, I know that you are ready. Well, that makes sense. So don't dress for where you are today. Dress for where you are going. So think ahead. If I want to rise, if God is going to make me promotable, make me valuable, I must be seen by my peers and seen by those who are ahead of me to be ready. Get ready. It also means this. That you are proactive. Now what does proactive mean? Proactive means that I'm thinking ahead. I'm not just solving for today. I'm solving for tomorrow. Think about the parable of the, the, parable of the ten virgins. There were ten virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom to come. 
five of them took enough oil for their lamps just to last for where they were. Five took oil for their lamps today and for extra. When the bridegroom didn't come on time, the oil of those who had just enough ran out. Those that were proactive, that were thinking ahead, had enough oil. So while the first five that were not ready ran out to go and get more, the bridegroom came. And those that were ready, that had thought ahead, were ready and were let in. When those that were not ready came back, they were knocking. It was too late because they were not thinking ahead. That's an example of preparing yourself for where you are today, but not for where you want to go tomorrow. Think about where you want to be tomorrow and prepare yourself for that place. Be proactive. I teach a class on leadership. And in that class, I ask a question. I say, you know, if, for example, you were told that you have to be at the government house by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning to sign a contract for one billion naira. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now they tell you, be there by 8 a.m. and sign the contract. Now, your house is at Ugboa, behind Professor Koya's house. You're in the far back, Ugboa. Okay? And your car, perhaps, does not always start on time. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't start. Sometimes you have to lay hands on your car before the car moves. So, you must be there by 8 a.m. What time should you leave your house in the morning to get to where you're going on time? 6 a.m. 5 a.m. 6 a.m. 5.30. 7 o'clock. God bless you, you'll be late. Anybody else? What time should you leave your house? Okay, these people here said that um, they will sleep in a hotel their government house. So by 8 a.m., they wake up and stroll in government house. Who thinks that they're foolish? Who thinks that they're wise? That's wise because that's being proactive. I told you your house is very far. I said your car does not always start. But the problem with most of us Christians is that when we wake up at 5, then the car is not starting. Now lay hands on your car. In the name of Jesus, I command you Command all you want. The person who slept next door to the government house, not commanding. He's simply being proactive. He's thinking. Valuable players are thinking for where they want to go, not where they are. May God make you valuable in Jesus' name. Think about where you want to go and plan accordingly. You see, the people who always rise are those who think ahead. I told you, don't dress for where you are today. Don't dress for the job you have. Dress for the job you want. Our Archbishop told us, he said to us, he said, look, dress the way you want to be addressed. Always think about where you are going. Be proactive. Okay? That's the first point. The first point of valuable players is that they are always ready. May you be always ready in Jesus' name. Amen? All right? Second point is this. Valuable players are problem solvers. Valuable players are problem solvers, and they are team players. Okay? So those people that are valuable, that always get the job done, that you always call, they solve problems. They are team players. They play with the rest of the team. Let me explain what I mean by that. The first one, I mentioned Daniel. Daniel solved the problem for Nebuchadnezzar. He had a dream, couldn't interpret it. Daniel interpreted it. Second dream again later on, didn't know what it meant. Daniel solved his problem. You see, when you are a problem solver, people come to look for you. Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, saw that Daniel solved his father's problems. And so when, that, when Nebuchadnezzar left the scene, he looked for Daniel because he knew he could also solve his problems. When there was a problem at night, he called for Daniel. Remember, he was ready. 
Okay? King Darius, the next king, also sought out Daniel. Here's the thing about people who are valuable. Your value must speak for you. Your value must speak for you. Because, you see, if I know you are valuable, I will search for you. I've said this before in our first service. If I have a problem, a medical problem, I won't go and ask you, say, please, um, Elder Adigye, please, who is the second best doctor you know? No, I will ask who is the best doctor you know? Because I want the best. I want the value that I will give. So always show your value. Here's how it must work for you. If you are going to be valuable, you must offer solutions in your workplace as a Christian. Here's what I'm talking about. Because if I say emerge and show the Christ in you, it's when you offer solutions that I will see the God in you. Daniel solved all these problems. And so every king knew that he was a problem solver. And when he solved the problem, he always pointed back to God and said, it is the God I serve. And so Nebuchadnezzar came to serve God. Darius came to serve God. You see, emerging means you must be valuable here on the earth. Our first Abshab told us, says, don't be so heavenly minded that you are earthly useless. Too many of us are Christians. On Sunday, we can speak in tongues, blasting tongues. You get to the office, they're not asking for who's the best tongue blaster. They want to know who's the best problem solver because they will promote those who solve problems. They will pay those who solve problems. May you be a problem solver in Jesus' name. So if you can think where I work, can I offer innovation? Can I offer things that are different? So that when they come to me, my answers are different. Here is where your Christianity comes in as a Christian. Because you have access to God, you have access to the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, you should have access to a different kind of knowledge. So that whenever they come to you, you pray, you speak to God, your answers are different. Your solutions are different. May that be your story in Jesus' name. May that be your story in Jesus' name. That you are innovative, you offer solutions. Here's another thought. Those people who are paid well get paid for the value they bring. Haven't you wondered why people who seem to be doing the same job so are being paid more? Because the value they bring, whenever they want them, they call them. They don't call you. But that will change in Jesus' name. I want you to be the kind, of person, the kind of person that is called. Because here, solving problems increases your value. Solving problems increases your value. Think about the pandemic we just went through. The companies that, that came out of the pandemic as high-value companies were the ones that solved problems. Okay, I won't tell you the name of the company, but think about it. All of you before, most of us, not all of you, most of us before the pandemic, when we want to have a meeting, we travel from here to Lagos, here to so, somewhere else to have meetings. When the pandemic came in, we had no choice but to stay at home, and we all heard of a company called Zoom because they were solving a problem that people had. That company went in value from a few hundred thousand dollars to several million because they were solving a problem. Now, that should be you in Jesus' name that will go from a value of zero to millions in Jesus' name because you are solving problems. May you be a problem solver in the name of Jesus. Now, again, let's continue. As a valuable Christian, does your work ethic speak for you? When it comes to coming to work, are you on time? Are you late? When it comes to work, can I count on you to get your work done? Can I give you an assignment and before the day is over, you have come back with solutions? Are you the kind of person that when things need to be solved, they answer, they look for you? Let me ask, let me ask you this one. What kind of attitude do you have? Does your face show the face of Christ? Or does your face show the face of devil? 
You know, they tell us that um, in pandemic, say, we are wearing masks now. They say, oh, don't worry, I'm smiling behind the mask. But the truth is this, are you really smiling? When, when, people come, when people come to look for you at work, do you face them with a smile? Hello, how are you? God bless you today. Good to see you. Or do you, mm, what do you want? What do you want? Eh, I don't want, no, 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 no. Your attitude that you come to work with can either bring somebody up or drop them low. Are you, are you following me this morning? So I'm hoping that when, when I see you at work, I come near you. The way you smile, the way you speak to me should raise me up. When I go, oh, say, wow, that guy, that woman, oh, look at her, she's perfect. Every time I see you, people should leave your presence lifted. Not that way, they come to you. And just says, what do you want? Even if I'm helping you and giving you money, the face I used to give that money can make sure I don't want. So your attitude should be one that is making me solve problems. By me seeing your face alone, half my problem should be solved. Not the one that when I see you, hey, I go down even lower. God forbid in Jesus' name. Your face, your attitude must be one that brings people up. And I pray that's your job in Jesus' name. Amen? Do you keep track of your accomplishments? Do you, do, do you, do you show what you have done? Because if your work ethic is high, people will know you. If your work ethic is high, and no one is telling you what you have done, tell them what you have done. Say, look, I've done this, I've done that. And show your value. David went to see Goliath. I said this man all, all the time. But when he got there, Saul said, what have you done? He said, oh, I killed a bear before. I killed a lion before. This one here will be no problem for me. Because he has shown what he had done before. Do you have accomplishments that you have done before? If you have, put them in front of you. Let your work ethic speak for you. May your value speak for you in Jesus' name. That's what you must do. You must be the kind of person that helps everybody else succeed. So David now succeeded, and the whole nation succeeded. So can you be a team player? Because you see, teams are made up of one or two great players, but you must still have 11 players of football. I don't care how great you are, you must still play as part of an 11. If you're playing basketball, you must still play as part of five. So you can be great individually, but can your strength, help the rest of the team win. So it means that you cannot carry the whole burden by yourself. Valuable players use their teammates. May you be one who works well with others in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Because helping your team succeed will increase your value. That's how you get valuable. That's how you show your commitment to an organization. Bishop Brunner in his talk said this too, that if you ever watch a movie, you know, watch the American movies, um, Nigerian ones, when the movie finishes, when the movie is ended, just right, to God be the glory. But if you watch an American movie, at the end, you will see they're showing the credits. It's 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, 40 people, 50 people, 60 people. All these names, 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 doing what? Why? Because for that movie to be a good movie, it took the work of many people. Are you, are you following where I'm going? So it takes people to work together. Habakkuk 2.2 says this. Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain, so that those who read it can run with it. So a valuable player has people that works with him or her. As you begin to work with other people, you will rise in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. All right, so you are valuable. You are resourceful. You help other people rise, and your team... Your, your organization will rise in Jesus' name. This is how you emerge and show the God in you. If you are valuable, God will show in you. Because the world will see you and see the Christ in you. Remember I said Christ in you is the hope of glory. So you must continue to rise in Jesus' name. The last thing is this. Valuable players are lifelong learners. They are always learning. Valuable players are lifelong learners. Valuable people are always learning. New beginnings, new levels will require new skills. New levels will require new skills. You cannot be at the same level that you were last year and expect to rise up. So I pray for you 
that every chance you get, you are learning something new. Every chance you get, you are shining something new. Let me go back to being a, being a prof again. Before you can go from lecturer to senior lecturer to professor, you must always have done more things. You have written more papers, more articles, more book chapters. So it's the more you write, the higher you rise. Am I making sense? They even, have a, they even have a saying in academia, you either publish or you perish. Because if you want to rise, you must always be learning new things. You must be adding to the knowledge in your field. Am I being too technical today? I can shout and say, oh, I can do some shouting today if you want shouting. God will bless you in Jesus' name. God will rise, raise you up in Jesus' name. God will bless you and cause you to shine this year in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm telling you how. Okay? This is telling you how. The how is what you must do. There's a key to being a lifelong learner. Okay? It's on the screen there again. Put it back on the screen. The key to being a lifelong learner is this. K-E-Y. Keep educating yourself. K-E-Y. Keep educating yourself. Please say it with me one more time. Say it with me. Keep educating yourself. I can't hear you. What if I help me, please? Keep educating yourself. If you want to rise, you cannot be at the same place you were last time. Because here's what happens. If all of us are at the same level, I told you in the beginning, every valley shall be made plain. Every mountain brought down. When everything is put at the same level, somebody must stand out. May that be you in Jesus' name. May that be you in Jesus' name. I'll close with where I ended last week. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. Paul said this to Timothy. He said, these things which you have heard me say among many witnesses and trust to reliable people who in turn will teach others. Here's my question for you. These things you have heard me say. Paul was saying, You've learned from me. You have learned from me. You heard it from me. Now, teach other people. My question for you that will help you be promotable this year is this. Are you ready to learn? Can you teach other people? I didn't hear you. Are you ready to learn? Can you teach other people? Remember, remember the, what we did that last week? We brought them out and one person took from the first one, learned it, and gave to the next one. Anybody who is not ready to learn cannot be promotable. Why? Because you don't have anything new that makes you different from anybody else. But if you are learning, you are rising. May you keep rising in Jesus' name. You see, the person that says, look, I know, I already know, I already know, that person is not teachable. Have you ever had people like that, when you're trying to tell somebody, okay, do it like this, say, oh, I know. Do it like that, I know. Do it like this, I know. After a while, what happens? Okay, you know now, continue by yourself. Because we get tired of people who know everything. A man or woman that thinks they already know anything cannot be taught anything new. So, be teachable. And then when you are teachable, be ready to teach other people. Let me tell you why this is important. Because you see, if you cannot train somebody else to take your place, that means you are not promotable. I'll say it again. If you cannot train somebody else to take your place, you are not promotable. Why? Because you'll be so valuable here. Say, ah, if I promote you now, who will, come, who will take a place? They'll keep you in the same place. So, teach somebody else what you know. Say, oh, but, but I don't want, if, they, if I teach them what I know, they will know what I know exactly. They should know what you know. So that if they know what you know, they can take a place and you can go higher. Am I? But if you are not teaching somebody else and nobody can take your place, they will keep you there. Ah, no, if he goes away now, nobody will do his work. So teach somebody else. And then when you go to your boss, say, um, boss, I want a promotion. 
I have trained one, two, and three. They can do my job. I am ready for the next level. I have learned new things. So I'm ready to be at the next level. These ones here can take my place. When people see that, it shows you are teachable, you are a learner, and you can teach other people. So if you are teachable, I'll raise you up. If you have taught, taught other people, I will also raise you up in Jesus' name. Going to school increases your value. So learn. Uh, Father told us, the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. May you not die in Jesus' name. May you be a learner in the name of Jesus. May you always be valuable in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you today that the value in you shall rise out in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you this afternoon or this morning that every grace which God has put upon your mind shall cause you to emerge in the name of Jesus. May you emerge this year in the name of Jesus. May you be valuable this year in the name of Jesus. May every spirit of God in you show up in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you today that you will be a lifelong learner. Everything that comes into you, you shall cause to learn and to grow from it in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you today that you also shall be a problem solver in the name of Jesus. May people come to look for you because you are solving their problems in Jesus' name. May you be a team player that when you go in there, people know that when they see you, their problem is solved in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you today, finally, that you'll be proactive, that you'll be a forward-thinking person, that you'll be ready when you are called upon. Day or night, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you that, first of all, as you put on God's armor, everything inside of you shall rise in Jesus' name. May the grace of God bless you in Jesus' name. May it cause you to be valuable everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Because as a valuable person, the world is coming to look for you in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you this morning that the ability to solve problems shall be your much word in the name of Jesus. The ability to be a problem solver shall be what they know you by in Jesus' name. Anywhere you go, problems die in Jesus' name. Anywhere you go, answers come in the name of Jesus. Be ready and dress for battle in the name of Jesus. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. May he give you wisdom in Jesus' name. And may his grace cause you to always shine in the name of Jesus. Now before we pray, I want to do, um, uh, before we pray, I want to do a quick one. Before we finish praying, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you don't know Christ as the one who has dressed you in his armor, who has dressed you in righteousness, then you are not going to go anywhere. You may rise in life, but after you rise in life, what happens after life? I want you to rise there as well too. So I want to pray for you this morning. If you are here, please just bow, everyone just bow your heads with me. Please bow your heads. If you are here this morning, say, Bishop Feb, I want to know Christ as my Savior. Just raise your hand where you are right now. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be sure that I am robed in righteousness. Just raise your hand where you are, and I'll pray for you this morning. We'll pray for you. I see one hand over there. Thank you very much. Do I see any other hands? We're going to pray this morning for you to come to know Christ. I see one, two, three hands, four hands. God bless you this morning. Anybody else? Anybody else? I want to give you a chance to know Christ as your Savior. I see a fifth hand. God bless you this morning. Can, you, can we pray together? Can we all pray together to this morning? Please just say with me this morning. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Please say, Dear Lord Jesus, I give my life to you today. Father, I want to be valuable in your kingdom. I want to be ready for you, Lord. So today, I give my life to you. Make me your child. Bring me to your kingdom. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Today, I am your child. In the name of Jesus. Say loud amen. Say loud amen. Amen. One more prayer as we close. I want to pray for you one more time. Please rise to your feet if you can. I want to speak a blessing over you. That the grace of God, which has been given to all of us at Calvary, that grace shall cause you to stand out in Jesus' name. 
that you will emerge as the most valuable in your organization in Jesus' name. You will emerge as the most valuable in your workplace in Jesus' name. You will emerge as the most valuable business where you are in the name of Jesus. Because you are doing things like solving problems. You are a team player. You are proactive. You are learning all the time and you are teaching. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that these principles I taught today shall be a blessing to your children in Jesus' name. May they imbibe them and cause them to be the values which they live by in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that Lord God, your wisdom shall shine forth among them in the name of Jesus, that as they emerge, the Christ in them shall be seen in the name of Jesus. Because of their value, we will see Jesus. Because of their problem-solving abilities, we shall see Jesus. Because of their always learning, we shall see Jesus. May our lives be shining examples of your goodness in the name of Jesus. Bless your sons. Bless your daughters. Cause them to always be the best wherever they are in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost we pray. Amen. May God bless you this morning. May God keep you strong in the name of Jesus. May God cause everything inside of you to be valuable in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please put your hands together for our bishop. That was a wonderful message. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you for the revelation of this morning. How many of you have the key? Did you hear the key? You have the key. What is it? Keep educating yourself if you want to get better. If you want to be promoted, keep educating yourself. How many of you will say, I will keep educating myself because I'm going higher. I am going where? Higher. May the Lord bless us as we hack into those words and run with it. Praise the Lord. Now it's time for tithes and offering. Put your hands together for the Lord that gave us the field to work and gave us the increase from which we are giving tithes. Praise the Lord. Now, if you are paying your tithe this morning, can you please rise and come forward with your tithes? Tithe is one-tenth at the least of your income given to God. It belongs to God. It's not yours. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord gave us the seed. We went and we planted the seed. He gave us increase. And out of that which he has given us, we're bringing that which belongs to him. Shall we raise up our ties as we pray? Is everybody here? Amen. Father, we give you thanks because you are the one that giveth power. You give power to our seed to produce. We thank you for your servants that are standing before you, your sons and your daughters obeying your command. And Lord God, we stand with them this morning to say, because they have obeyed, the blessing of obedience shall follow them and abide with them and their house forever in the name of Jesus. Father God, we want to use this time, oh God, to pray for the sources, oh God, from which this money has come. Whatsoever they do with their hands, whatever they are doing, the Lord God gave them this increase. We plead the blood of Jesus upon it and decree that it shall continue to increase in the name of Jesus. That source shall never dry. 
And as they give unto you, thank you because you will multiply the 90 that is left. It shall be more than a hundred in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as they release their hand to drop their tithes, Father, may those hands not return empty. May they be blessed and multiplied according to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's drop our tithes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the tither shall abide with you. Amen. Shall the rest of us all stand up to bring our offerings? Shall we come up with our offerings? The Bible says, That shall not appear before the Lord empty. So, make sure you have something. No matter how small or how big. And if your hand is empty, you are permitted. Ask the person next to you. Have you got any for me? Please, 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 make sure your hand is not empty. Make sure your hand is not empty. Because a hundredfold of emptiness is emptiness. Are we all ready? Let's raise up our, tie, our offerings. Our Father God, we thank you because you have given us, first of all, our lives. We are alive. That's why we are offering something to you. The dead cannot pay offering. Lord God, we stand to say thank you so much for what you have given us. And out of the abundance that you have given us, Lord, we have come to say thank you. This is our thank you for all you have done for us. Father God, we thank you because as we drop it, you will bless us more. We will have much more to give. If whatever we are giving today shall be the least we will ever give. According to your word of multiplication, thank you, Father, for doing it. Take all the glory and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Can we please appreciate our orchestra team? You are doing well. Praise God. Okay, quickly, I want to remind us that we are already on Satellite TV. Put your hands together for yourself. And it's made possible by you and me. The information we are getting from the team involved is that funds are coming in for the TV, which is a good thing for the TV subscription. That means we are going to continue our broadcast. We're not going to show a little and go down. No, we're going to continue. And one of the things we have noticed is that 60 to 70 percent of the funds that are coming in are not from Faith Arena. They are from people that have joined the vision with us. So even as we are believing in the vision, people outside are believing because we believe. So I want you to believe more. So as you believe more, people will believe more and they will join you to sponsor God's work in the name of Jesus. I've always said it that stones will not cry out in our place. As long as we are alive, we will fund the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good news. Amen. One of our pastors in the house, the chief of staff to the archbishop, the wife gave birth to a bouncing baby boy yesterday. That's Reverend Harry. Son, siblings, mother, and father all doing well. To the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Quickly, we want to recognize our bishop who's worshiping with us here today with his lovely wife, Bishop Modi. Good to have you in service. It's always fun to have you in service. Thank you so much. That was my father's pastor. Hallelujah. My father saved under him. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. Amen. We have some families having Thanksgiving today and one testimony. Amen. So quickly, we want to welcome the family of Reverend Inobakari to quickly come up for their Thanksgiving and also Sister Ehemwa for her testimony. Choir, please help me. Inobakari, it's time for us to join you to thank God for all God is doing for you. God is blessing you and in extension, is also blessing us. Hallelujah. I love good things. Please join them to give thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, we have our sister here, Mrs. Ehemwa, whose sister was in the labor ward for five days. She was in labor, not labor ward, labor for five days. And at the end of the day, both baby and mother are doing fine. Only God could have done this for us. Hallelujah. Quickly, we want to hand over the mic to Bishop Modi to quickly pray for them. Blessings of God and her birthday on the family and her sister process through childbirth. Shall we pray? 
Father, thank you for these families. Thank you for what you've done for them. What you did for them, you also did for us. You say we should rejoice with them that do rejoice. We are rejoicing with them. For all that you did for them, the blessings you blessed them with. The safe delivery you gave to our daughter. We glorify your name. Thank you for every good thing you have done. We leave them into your mighty hand. We ask that from today, more of your blessings they will see in the name of Jesus Christ. Testimony will not cease in your homes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless you with the blessings of God. Father, we ask that your grace and salvation for them continue to keep and strengthen them. Bless their going out, bless their coming in with peace, joy, and increase. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Let's give our thanksgiving offering. <laughs> of us are still enjoying service. Good to know. Now for those of us that raised our hands during the administration after the message, if you raised your hand when Bishop called for renewing your relationship with Christ, please don't rush home. Just wait at the close of service to meet with me and some other ministers there. Just walk up to where I am. I will be seated there. We want to share some information with you. Hallelujah. And also, we want to remind us that the one million acts of kindness still continues. By next Sunday, we'll be taking some more pictures. We could not take all the pictures last Sunday. We'll be taking some more pictures. So please, if you have not sent your pictures to us, meet me at the close of service so I can send them. Uh, I'm aware the women also went to Project Charity Love. So please, let's have those pictures. Let's have those things. And the scriptural union program, the students we are ministered to. So please, please, let's have those information. Hallelujah. With Jesus joy in my heart, can we just rise on our feet as we make welcome the Bishop of Faith Arena for the benediction? No other than our own Bishop, my Bishop, your Bishop, Bishop Fev Idahosa. Hallelujah. Keep clapping until he gets here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in church this morning. We're also praying that this will be a great week for you in Jesus' name. We are halfway through the month, and by God's grace, as this month ends, a new quarter is going to begin very soon. I'm also praying, I'm asking God for another 90 days testimonies in the next quarter in Jesus' name. We'll share these as we go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. But thank you for being in church this week. I want you to please share the good news of God this week. If you want to get those slides, there's some slides and also some notes. Let um, Pastor Emmanuel know, Pastor Eze know. They'll give you the slides as well. So you can also pass them out to your friends on WhatsApp or on Telegram, wherever you want. We want ourselves to be digital missionaries. So we're going to give you some of these things so you can pass them out. Put them on your status, put them in different places. So people can get blessed by them through the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll send this out to you, please, through your groups. And help us please spread the word around. As we close this morning, I want to thank you for being in church. Thank all of our ministers for being here. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray for you from, from the word of God. Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So Father, right now we pray for your children today.
that indeed that sense of gratitude for what you have already given to us shall be ours in Jesus' name. But I pray, Lord God, that this week, this month, and this year will be a year of promotion for your children in the name of Jesus. But I pray for them, first of all, that they will work worthy of promotion. I pray for your sons and daughters that they shall be valuable wherever they go in the name of Jesus. But I ask that you reveal in our hearts, reveal in our spirits, the sense, the wisdom, and the grace that will cause us to rise higher in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will bless their work. I pray that their work shall be influential. I pray that their work shall be valuable. I pray that their work shall contribute positively to wherever they are in the name of Jesus. For I ask that you bring them and their work to the attention of those who matter this month in the name of Jesus. I thank you because your word declares that promotion comes first from you. And so, Lord God, we receive your spiritual promotion in Jesus' name. And that promotion shall be ours in the name of Jesus. Your sons and daughters shall rise in the name of Jesus. The value in them shall be seen by the world in the name of Jesus. May they be sought after. May the world come to look for them in the name of Jesus. No matter where they are, Lord God, let them be like David, where we shall sit down and wait until they show up in the name of Jesus. May blessings pursue your children. May grace lift them up in the name of Jesus. And may your strength be their watchword in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go and have a great week in Jesus' name. God's blessings are yours. Amen.
Hallelujah. Please, those that gave their life to Christ are waiting for you, and those that want to renew their relationship with Christ, I'm also waiting for you here. 